Hi everyone, my name is Michael Herman and I've been running various online businesses over the past seven years. In these videos, I show you how my businesses make money. My motivation for this is simply to share my experiences. I think starting a business is hard and I want to help you and others do the same. I feel that if we as a community of entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs stick together in this way and help each other, then we can all benefit. And secondly, maybe if you already have an online business, then this video will inspire you to create a similar video yourself where you share your experiences. And again, if you do that, then we as a community, we stick together and we help and learn from each other. And for instance, I might benefit by watching your video. So let's jump in. The business I want to talk to you today about is called TerminErinnerung.org. It currently makes me around $2,000 per month. So it has more than $2,000 per month in revenue and after expenses I'm left with around $1,900 each month. So let me show you what it does. In this business, doctors pay me to send SMS reminders to their patients. A typical example of this are uh, reminders of the form, Dear Mr. So-and-so, please don't forget you have an appointment tomorrow at 3 p.m. with Dr. XYZ. So say 24 hours before the appointment, a patient receives such an SMS reminder from my system. Another kind of SMS that I send are recall SMS. For instance, people who are over 50 years of age should regularly, i.e. every 10 years or so, have a coloscopy. This is a kind of exam where a doctor can find colon cancer if it is developing and if the doctor finds this cancer on time then the patient stands a very good chance of going through this illness without any problem but if this kind of cancer is not detected on time then the outlook is very very bleak for the patients so these checkup exams are very important and so I, for some of my customers, I send SMS reminders to the patients that they should please um, schedule an appointment for such an exam. And the final kind of SMS that I send are feedback SMS. So the patient already had an appointment, just, just left the clinic maybe, and then I send them an SMS, dear patient, how did you like our services and please help us improve by filling in this brief form. So it's all about these SMS reminders. The first thing I think you would will likely be interested in are the financials. So let's see how this business is doing. I've been running it uh, since 2014. Um, at the time I record this, it's 2019. But if you, I think these lessons here are pretty, uh, will stand the time test of time very well, so it doesn't matter if you watch this video in 2025, for instance. So since starting the business, I've invested around 2,000 hours into it. I've made around $90,000 in profit. So that is actually money I got to keep after expenses, which puts my hourly wage of working on this business at $44 an hour. At the moment, I'm this has been pretty stable for the past few years. I only need to spend around 10, nine to 10 hours each month. And I make, as I said, $1,900 each month from it. And that puts my hourly wage now that the business is set up and running at $200 an hour, which I think is very nice. So let me give you a bit of more of a history and context of how this business developed in the past five years. So you can maybe gain experience from just from listening to me. I started in 2014. I got the idea from a guy in the United States called, or actually he lived in Japan, but he's called Patrick McKenzie. 
and he is very well known in startup circles on the internet and he started basically this or a very similar business called appointmentreminder.org in the United States and I thought well why don't I just copy him um, here in Austria or more generally in Europe. So Patrick if you're seeing this then thank you very much for uh, sharing your learnings uh, so publicly on your blog. My first two customers were um, my own doctors so I knew them personally and so I went to see them and I said hey I have this new business would you like my services? I'm sure you, some of your patients forget their appointments and I can help with this. And they were happy and glad to um, accept me as their service provider. And then I gradually got more customers. The peak number of customers were eight in 2017. So again, I got them through connections, either knowing them personally or indirectly through a friend, for instance, or by presenting at uh, conferences. So there are conferences for doctors and I sponsored one of these conferences, for instance, and that also got me two customers. Right now, I only have five customers, but these five pay me more than the, I mean, pay me more each than the eight I had previously. So that's uh, okay. And another interesting statistical fact about the business is that it's already sent out 200,000 SMS at this point, which is pretty incredible to me. If you think that um, each SMS is a little ping on a human being's phone in their daily lives, um, it really feels like I've somehow touched um, quite a few people's lives. And the most uh, important or best, the the thing that feels best um, about this aspect of the business is that I, I, one of my customers told me that these SMS reminders, especially for those recall SMS where patients take coloscopies, which can help the doctor find colon cancer, in 2016 saved two lives. Um, so the patients received an SMS, a, a reminder, dear patient, please come in for your coloscopy checkup exam they did the doctor found colon cancer in a stage that was still treatable and essentially saved their lives and these patients said that if they had not received those reminders they would not have taken the exam and given the way um, that colon cancer usually develops their outlook would have been very very bleak so I like to think and I do believe that this business is actually does something good for the world as well, besides being a good business. So you may wonder, okay, so this all sounds great. So like, doctors are happy, customers, patients are happy. Um, but then he had eight customers in 2017 and only five now. So why, why, is not, why isn't the business growing anymore? So shouldn't it be more, shouldn't there be more and more customers? And to explain why this is, I need to tell you a bit more about the history and context um, in which this business works. So I sent out SMS reminders for doctor's appointments or based on the doctor's appointment data. And this data needs to come from somewhere. Some of my customers used to have, keep their appointments on with pen and paper. So they had like blocks of paper where they had essentially a handwritten calendar of all their upcoming appointments. And these customers of mine I uh, provided with a web calendar, I'll show you a screenshot in a second, where they can now electronically keep their appointments and this way I have the necessary data for sending out the SMS reminders at the appropriate time. But quite a few of my other customers already have an existing system. So the doctor for 20 years has had a piece of software where they keep their appointments and the patient data and and all the exam results and so on and so forth. And the doctor obviously doesn't want to switch away from this system that they have had for a long time just to get SMS reminders. So what I did in these cases was to develop an integration. Here is a screenshot of the web calendar. Uh, so, see it's, it, so I programmed this and my customers that use it get a login where they can then um, 
access this web interface. It's very nice and colorful and the cast doctors and their receptionists especially really like it because it's so easy to use. And as I said, the alternative is an integration to the doctor's existing system. So here is the doctor with his PC and existing system. And I developed something that regularly syncs the necessary data and only the necessary data to my server. So then my servers can send out these SMS reminders. And this is where the problem lies. Um, by So I essentially hook into the doctor for many or most of my customers, they essentially hooked into some existing third-party system. And so then one day I got this friendly letter from one of my customers at the time, which said, Dear Mr. Herman, we need to cancel your SMS service. We have been happy with it. But the provider of our practice service into which you integrate told us that we can no longer work with you. If we do not obey, they will shut down our software this would ruin our clinic. Furthermore, our provider told us that they will soon be rolling out their own SMS reminder feature. So this software provider essentially kicked me out of uh, this contract. And at that point, I realized that I'm really in a very vulnerable position in, in creating just an add-on to doctors' existing systems. So what's the current status? Right now, this business provides me with very stable income. Doctors, they, in almost all cases, pay on time and pay are very reliable. Um, because I realized that I'm very fundamentally limited um, with this add-on approach um, and very vulnerable, I do no, no longer actively grow the business. So sales uh, for this business require a lot of effort. So it requires talking to doctors and customers, prospective customers for a long time. And then I don't want to invest this effort any longer now that I know that I can lose customers so easily. So I no longer actively grow it, but new customers still sometimes find me. Uh, just recently, I got my first customer in Germany. They found me only through the internet and everything was set up just via email, which was a first. As I said previously, I had to talk to the doctors for quite some time and also in person. Furthermore, I told you I used to have eight customers, now I have five, but the five pay me more. And the reason the five pay me more is that um, they wanted more and more features from me, which I charged them for. So for instance, these feedback SMS that I mentioned at the beginning, where patients don't just get a reminder for their upcoming appointment, but also an SMS after their appointment is an additional feature that I charge for. And so I've gotten to develop relationships with my customers where they trust me more and I can serve them better by building extra functionality. So the lessons I learned from this business um, in the past five years, and I hope that these, these will also be the lessons that you take away from watching this video are high touch niches can be very profitable. So as I said, doctors, they require talking to, so they don't, they are not easy customers and that they, you can just sell easily send them, sell them a canned tool or solution. But once they are your customer, they have a lot of money to spend. They pay you well, and they're very reliable customers. So, this high touch approach uh, can be very profitable. And what's nice about it is that you can really make your customers happy. If you only have a handful of customers and not thousands upon thousands, then you can, and they pay you well, then you can really work to make them happy. You can build very custom solutions that fit their requirements perfectly. And that's very nice because you get to develop relationships with them and they appreciate your work and they pay you well, so that's really good. The drawback is that such a high touch um, approach uh, requires, especially when it comes to sales, a lot of effort. You, customers need a lot of talking to, especially doctors, uh, before they're ready to purchase your services. Um, you often need connections. So most of my customers 
were either my own doctors or people I knew through a friend or maybe for instance I sponsored a conference for doctors and so also there I was personally available and that's the last point that's really important is that you really need to talk to people and be willing to do that and especially for an engineer like me who likes to sit in his room and program all day uh, that means leaving your comfort zone but it pays off I also learned that it it's dangerous to plug into a hostile ecosystem and actually in my experience running online businesses and various projects it's sometimes you have an idea of really of plugging into some existing platform or software or website where you think ah this is this would be great but then if that the provider and the creator of this platform doesn't really want you there then you are in a very, very vulnerable position because they have all the power and in most cases can kick you out very, very easily. And that's exactly what happened to me um, when I developed this integration into the doctor's existing systems. So I lear I've learned to vet future businesses more carefully with regards to such an approach. And in my case, and for this business, I could have worked around this problem by not just plugging into existing doctor systems, but by, by creating an entire doctor system myself. So I could have, instead of only managing the doctor's appointments, I could have created a software that also lets them manage their patient data and health records and MRI scans and billing and all these things that their current software can do. And I do or at least did think that there was an opening in the market um, where that might have been possible. But I decided that I did not want to go that route because it would have been a lot of effort. And I did not want to spend the 10 or 15 years of my life required on creating such a complex piece of software um, in this niche. And so that's the final a lesson is that it's important to do something you love. So I knew I did not lo love this niche enough um, to spend 10 or 15 years of my life on. And so it's important to find something where you are passionate about it enough so you're okay with spending many years on it. But I do also want to caveat this with it also needs to pay the bills. So in another project of mine I did something I loved and it was not a good business and I spent a lot of time, essentially wasted time, doing something that I loved but which didn't pay the bills. And so it's this balance between it needs to be something you care about but it also needs to be something that is financially sustainable at least. So this, these are my lessons. Um, if you'd like to learn more, you can go to my website at herman.io, double R, double M. The website of this business is uh, terminerinnerung.org. Terminerinnerung is the German word for appointment reminder. So check that out if you're interested. And I was also interviewed about this business and I shared some of the lessons that I've just told you in an interview on indiehackers.com slash product slash Terminerinnerung. So thank you very much for watching and best of luck with your own businesses.